Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to parse Twitter. Before we get into the actual code, uh, there's a few things I want to mention. Uh, the first thing is Twitter offers an API for developers. If you haven't checked that out, definitely go check it out. Uh, the downside to it, of course, is they only offer 1% at random of the full Twitter firehose, and the firehose means 100% of Twitter data, um, but still worth checking out. Two, there are official data resellers. There are only three of them, and they are, the first one is NIP, G-N-I-P. This is the first official data reseller for Twitter. They offer you 10% of the firehose as well as historical data for a price starting at $500 a month, but heed the warning that it is starting at, just like a car, it goes up significantly from there. So there's that. There's also Data Sift. Um, they sell you uh, the data and they sell it to you by uh, volume, right? So MIP is $500 a month for 10%. Data Sift is going to be 10 cents per milli of tweets. So for every thousand tweets, it's 10 cents, or for 10,000 tweets, it's a dollar. Um, so that's how that's going to work. And then also there's Topsy. I believe it's access to the entire fire hose. Um, and they also do some of the processing for you. And this is starting at $12,000 a year. So twice the cost of NIP, yet I believe they're giving you way more uh, access to data. So anyways, those are the resellers. And the final point I would like to make is this video is purely for educational use only. I'm not responsible for how you use this code or any problems that might arise if you do use this code. Please keep in mind that I don't believe you have the legal right to parse Twitter and display the actual data that you're parsing. So if you're parsing a tweet, you can't make an application that displays that tweet somewhere else. I don't think you own the rights to that data. I'm not positive. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to speak on um, that. Just know that whatever you plan to do with this, um, you're responsible for looking up the legalities of it on your own. With that, let's get started. Um, so anyway, if we come over here to Twitter, um, here is Twitter now. You aren't going to need an account for what we're about to do. I'm just going to be showing you. And normally if you come to Twitter, they don't give you like a search or anything like that. I'm not really sure why, but that's the way that they do it. Um, but what we can do is we could just use a link. And let's just use a link real quick. And let's just twitter.com slash search. Let's see how that works out. Yep. So we get this little search bar. There's also a search here. Let's say we want to search Obama. What does that look like? Oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> Hold on. Let's do Obama and correctly spell it and all that. Okay, so you're given this uh, result page. Now, um, generally, depending on what kind of a website uh, that you're attempting to parse, usually if it has any sort of parameters, if you look at the URL, you'll find the parameters really quick. Here we can see Q, probably short for query, and they're most likely to be PHP or something like that. This is obviously what we queried. And then another variable here, and this is the and, it means another variable. And then this is SRC, it's whatever they call their variable. I'm going to go ahead and assume this means source equals, and this is the answer to that variable, TYPD. I'm going to also make another assumption that this stands for typed as in the user literally typed in Obama. So like if you use their search bar, it's gonna throw that in as opposed to you could just do Obama uh, and no longer is it typed, you know, and you're still getting the same results, but I'm sure that they're switching something up and we're just unbeknownst to it at the moment. So anyway, there's that. The next thing that we'll notice right away is some of these tweets, um, normally you're gonna land on this page. It's gonna to be top tweets, right? So you're getting tweets, this guy's from eight hours ago, 26 minutes, 42 minutes, then you're starting to get into the one hours and then slowly getting into the two hours as you continue scrolling more and more. But even these, this is not the full, this is definitely not the full thing. Like if we keep scrolling, we're, we're seeing what I believe to be about 1% of the data. But it, there is a way to get more than that 1% and here is how to do it. Um, so let's say we wanna do Obama um, what what they're doing is 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 um, they're going to treat you 
differently depending on how you're using their site. So if you're using it kind of like a user might, they're going to treat you a little bit differently, and they do. And so, like, if we say, um, let's, instead of saying and source typed, let's say and um, source equals hash. And this means we clicked on a symbol, like pound Obama, hashtag Obama. Let's hit enter here. Let's see what we get. Um, again, we're greeted with this top post here um, from nine hours ago. Then we got the 27 minute, 43 minute, one hour, uh, and so on. But if we click um, all again, we see that we arrive at this page that says 17 seconds, 19 seconds, 20 seconds, and so on. And uh, if we continue to refresh this page, um, now we're uh, again getting that same stuff. So what has changed? Well, it's this real time that changed. So we want to put real time into the link. Okay, so it looks like at the end of the day, this is the link that we really want to start parsing. So let's take this link and we'll just copy and paste it. Let's head over to our code now. Um, and we're going to need a few imports. Uh, the first import that I'm going to go ahead and import is regular expressions. So import RE. From RE, we want to import sub because we're going to be using that. Um, another thing we want to use uh, I guess we don't really, we're going to import time, we don't need it, I'm just going to use it for a timer. Um, eventually you will need it when we expand the program, but we don't need it just yet. But we're going to import, um, I guess we don't really need date time for now, we're going to import cookie lib, and from cookie lib, uh, we're going to import cookie jar, and then from url lib2, we're going to import url open, and whoops, we didn't import URL lib, so that's all. all right. Import URL lib two, and then from there we're going to import um, URL open. Now let's get into uh, establishing our browser and our cookie jar. Um, even though when the website doesn't uh, cookies, I don't think that Twitter's storing any cookies, especially if you're not logging in. It's always good to just have the option there if they decide to. So we're going to go ahead and specify that. Cookie jar, we're going to say opener equals URL lib to the build underscore opener. And we're going to open it with URL lib to dot HTTP cookie processor. And for this, we're going to use what we just defined as CJ. Uh, if I'm going too fast for you guys, I do have another tutorial. I think it's in my sentiment analysis that I go more into detail about. It's like the basic sentiment analysis tutorials. I go into more detail about how all this stuff's working. I don't really want to keep repeating myself every time I have like something visiting a web page. But anyway, now we're going to add the headers. The reason you're adding headers is because naturally the header of this I think is like URL lib, Python, and then your Python version. So when a website uh, doesn't want something parsing them, uh, they'll just block anybody with that, right? Because it's clearly a robot. <laughs> so they just automatically block those things, uh, especially if they're a website that offers an API. So it's always a good idea to change that. So now we've specified our opener. Now the next thing we want to do, um, just to make this a little bit uh, dynamic, I'm just going to say keyword. We're going to say our keyword is Obama in this case. And then starting link is the beginning link of what we want and we've kind of already done this the beginning right before we need Obama's this right because we're gonna make this be dynamic and then we'll add add source equals hash at the end of it um, so we'll take the starting link and I never took the starting link so let me grab it one more time copy it and pop over here this is our starting link HTTPS twitter.com and so on now let's begin um, coding our actual program. Let me add some indents here. So, okay, here's some lines. So now we're going to make uh, our main loop. Basically, it's very basic to do what we're about to do. So we're going to say define name, and I always do try and accepts within my uh, loops. Accept, and we're going to accept the exception. We're going to call that e if there is one, and then we want to print the stringed out version of e. And then if we do have an exception, let's go ahead and sleep for uh, whenever we have a loop. And we'll just say print aired in the main try. So we know where we aired. Now, within our try loop, uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to say source code equals um, 
opener dot oops opener dot open and in fact since this will always stay the same let's actually uh we'll get rid of starting link we're not going to use that probably so we're going to take this and we'll throw it right in here then what we're going to say plus keyword plus um and source equals hash and then we're going to hit read so that's going to spit out the source code of this page so Oh, what did we not? We didn't close off something. Oh, we didn't close off this, I bet. Yeah. So, close that off. And now, hopefully, yes. Okay. So, now that we're back, um, the next thing that we're going to want to do is split up the source code. At the moment, we don't know how we're going to split it, so let's check that out. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is let's just do a quint, uh, quick print. Uh, let's just print out our source code. Okay, so we'll save that, we'll run it, pop on over here, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, you know what? We didn't call main. <laughs> we might have been sitting for a while. All right, one more time. Wait for it. There we go. All right, so now we have the source code. Let us... Uh, yes, a huge mess. Okay, so we're just going to control A, copy, and let's open up a notepad. It's probably the best way to go about this. So we come over here, paste all of this nonsense into a notepad file. Next thing that might be helpful for us is if we can go quickly. Refresh, and let's look for something that's probably in here. Wake up America, right? So let's see if we can find that tweet. Wake up America. Wake up Amer wake up, how about that? Can't find wake up, damn it. All right, uh, let's try, let's see, how long ago was that wake up America? Probably too, too close. Twitter, or I mean Obama gets a ton. So let's try uh, hos hospitals. Hospitals, let's see if this is the right one. Hospital 2, okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is one of them. Hospital to Obama's administration. Hey, throw us a bone here. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, clearly this is a tweet, right? If we look right here, we can see, okay, this is paragraph class JS dash tweet text space tweet text. Close quotes, close tag, blah, 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 blah. And it looks like the tweet goes all the way to this closing paragraph tag obviously within here we have a whole bunch of junk that we don't really want just yet but we'll get to that but first thing we want to do is definitely split by this this paragraph of you know this stuff so um, with that let's go ahead and we'll save that we'll just leave this notepad plus plus open we'll close out our shell here and let's come back over here and the next thing we want to do is okay now that we know this let's start splitting up um, the source code so the next thing we want to do is let's say let's just call it split source equals and we're going to do re.find all we want to create an array is what this is going to do and we're going to use a regular expression for this and within our regular expression uh, we want to use that that paragraph uh, tag that specific tag and that was this I'm literally copying and pasting it from the source code that was the beginning right so we want that to be the beginning of the regular expression and then the way regular expressions work, if you're not familiar with regular expressions, I also have a tutorial on those. Oh my goodness. So you can either check those out or just continue following along. So what we're going to be looking for now is uh, you put in uh, parentheses what we want. We want period for any character besides new line and all that fun stuff. Um, followed by, uh, and we want zero more repetitions of that. And then we want one uh, or I mean zero or one repetitions of that. If that doesn't make any sense to you, uh, it's just a regular expression pattern that's going to work for this scenario. And again, if you want to learn more about regular expressions, I happen to have a regular expression tutorial. So I'm not going to talk too much on that. So then we, so basically we have that, and then we have another uh, closing paragraph tag. Like we want to pull all of that kind of stuff in between these. Uh, the specific paragraph class and anything within this specific paragraph task or um, class rather. 
So once we've done that, uh, the next thing we want to say is for we're going to create a for loop for this, and we're going to say for item in split source, we want to print item. So let's see where we stand, and then I'm also going to add a quick little sleeper here. Otherwise, we'll just print like a thousand of these items. I just want to see one item. So we shall wait. Oops, hold on. Let me try. let's go back over here. First of all, we aired in the main try, find all. Okay, yeah, okay, let's see what we've done. Um, the first thing we, okay, first of all, we want to stop printing out the source code. We don't want to do that anymore. And we didn't finish our regular expression. We just, like, close it off. Uh, it takes two commands, or two parameters, rather. And the second parameter is where you want to apply this uh, regular expression. And in this case, we want to apply it to source code. So, again, save it. We close off this, so hopefully we'll just print a single uh, tweet. And see? Okay. So, anti, and then strong tag Obama, and it's using the strong tag because that's what we're searching for, right? And so later on, you could use that to, you know, find it, but also if you already know what your keyword is, you don't really need those strong tags. And we're going I'm going to be showing you how to get rid of that stuff in a bit. But, anyway, this is the, um, the first tweet that we've got. So, we'll close out of that. So, that was a success. Um, so now, just out of curiosity, um, the answer is 20, but uh, just to show you, uh, and if you want to make sure you're doing it right, you know, print, print the length of split source, so you know how many tweets we even have. Um, so we'll pop back over here after we've run it. Yeah, so every time uh, you visit this URL, it's going to uh, display the most recent 20 tweets. And eventually, this is going to be really important because uh, you're not you're going to want to uh, maximize efficiency, especially if you're parsing a website like Twitter. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is working out pretty well for us. We're now parsing uh, individual tweets. Obviously, let me bring it back up again. Obviously, uh, the tweets are still really, really messy. Uh, we've got you know all this stuff and the spans and the titles and all this junk, really. Um, but that's how you're going to parse individual tweet. So I'm going to cut off the video here. I am going to continue uh, with a bit of a mini series on, you know, first we'll clean this up and then I'll show you some other really cool stuff um, for parsing Twitter. And, uh, but these, this is the bare bones, the bare basics. And um, so, yeah, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to more videos. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions. And until next time.